Hmm, I should ask my subscribers what their preferred video length is. 30 minute video, take it or leave it. I originally came up with this idea in August of 2022. At first, it was going to be a normal ranking of the Animal Jam Den video, but I soon realized that everyone and their dog had already done that or something similar to it. So I've decided to spice things up a bit with ranking every Animal Jam Den based on how practical they are. The dens will be ranked based on four important factors. How normal will I sound to others if I live here? How easy is it to reach society? How comfortably can I exist here? And finally, how much would I want to live here in real life? Because I have to shove my opinion in there somewhere. I will also assume that all these dens exist in the real world, where humans, not animals, are trying to live in them. With that being said, we're starting with the most impractical den in Animal Jam. This is the most impractical, most unlivable, most deadly den in Animal Jam. Why, you may ask? Well, for starters, I'm sure the glowing green goo everywhere would instantaneously unalive any living creature that comes within a three mile radius of it. The metal walls of the den, especially that metal slide, would give you tetanus pretty much immediately. Not to mention this den is called the Phantom Fortress, so there must be phantom smog and stuff like that everywhere. Phantoms are known for polluting and unaliving large amounts of flora, so who's to say that stuff can't unalive you too? So now that you've made the worst decision of your life and deciding to move here, it's time to escape. Fast. But there's just one problem. Where would this even be located? Assuming that this den is somewhere in the real world, where, realistically, would this be located? Nowhere near any form of society, that's for sure. This means you're not going to be able to escape, and no one's coming to help you, which leaves you with no other choice but to experience a slow, painful unaliving to the toxic fumes in the air. So yeah, great den, 10 out of 10, I'd live there. Glacier Spring Spa. All right, kids, can you tell me what happens when you mix freezing cold air, water, and a living being? Um... A happy person eating a popsicle? Uh, no, you get hypothermia. But yeah, being a popsicle could also describe it. Glacier Spring Spa, I'd assume, is a glacier floating somewhere in the middle of the ocean. And 91% of all glaciers are found in Antarctica. We're seeing the problem here. You can't try and swim to land because you'd sooner freeze to death before you make it 10 meters away from the glacier, and you can't make a boat due to the lack of resources on the glacier. But you definitely can't stay there because the freezing cold air and lack of food, drinkable water, and adequate shelter would quickly unalive you. Essentially, attempting to live in this den would be akin to getting the worst possible spawn in Minecraft Hardcore. Sugar Palace Imagine the stickiest, most revolting thing you've ever stepped in. Now, imagine stepping on that every day for the rest of your life. That's what living in the Sugar Palace is like. This floating confectioner's nightmare is impractical to live on for a multitude of reasons. First and foremost, how do you get down? <laughs> well, you don't. The ground can't even be seen from where the castle is, and attempting to jump down will end just about as well as you'd expect. Attempting to live in the palace wouldn't work either, because there's no water in sight, and would you eat half-rotting sugar that you've been stepping on for days on end? I hope not! Eventually, inevitably, all the sugar that makes up the palace will rot away, leaving you to fall to your demise. Volcano Isle. The lava, if you don't touch it and are burnt to a crisp immediately, will still affect you over time with its heat and smoke. However, unlike Glacier Spring, there are trees and leaves growing on the island that could possibly be used to craft a raft of sorts. There's also a small hut off to the side that can be used as a temporary shelter, but this volcano is still in the middle of nowhere, and very likely, you will not survive. Lunar Base Forget about the past few dens, this is the one that's impossible to escape, even though there seems to be a rocket ship that I'll just assume is functional attached to the side of the base. Pretty much, no one on Earth would know how to pilot that. And if they tried, they most likely crash into the middle of the ocean or accidentally launch in a completely different direction. Within the lunar base itself, there would most likely be a lot of canned food stocked up there, so you'd have at least a few months worth of food. But after that, we can add another body to the infinite vacuum of space. Candy Cavern. The candy, and especially the chocolate river, will eventually mold over, and this completely enclosed cavern will force you to breathe in all the beautiful spores. On the positive side, the cave seems to be pretty close to the surface, and the walls are most likely made of candy, allowing for a possible escape, though you might have to sacrifice a few weeks and your sanity to make this work. Desert Oasis. People don't tend to build civilizations in the desert, so your chances of finding anyone else is 
very slim. I'm only giving it one point for comfortability because there's water. Everything else about this den is insanely uncomfortable. And anyone attempting to live here will most likely get a heat stroke or get stung by a scorpion or something. Polar Palace. Yet again, this massive, elaborate palace built smack dab in the middle of the ocean. There may be an inside to this palace, but it's still made of literal snow and ice, so I doubt it's warm at all. Also, try actually using that giant snow slide. You'd end up in a nice, cool ice bath, where you can proceed to stay down there forever as there's no way to climb back up. Bioluminescent Bay I feel as though everyone's surprised that this isn't at the very bottom of the list, but hear me out. It's most likely relatively close to shore because coral reefs aren't normally found far out, not to mention the water you'd be in would be pretty warm, as most coral reefs like to be in warmer waters. The water at seen in the den is pretty light, so the reef must be relatively close to the surface. Now, don't get me wrong, it's definitely not livable, but at least it's somewhat escapable by swimming up. But if you did try to use this as a home, you'll drown. Simple as that. Snowy Citadel. Again, the Citadel is made entirely of ice. I'm not worried about it melting because the environment must be cold enough to keep it solid. But guess how it lived to feel in a house made entirely of ice? Cold! Two points for accessibility because of the background, what appears to be the northern lights are visible. And surprisingly, the northern lights can be viewed from any of these places. So at least it's not Antarctica. Probably. Spooky Cave, a cavern filled with all of these completely untouched colorful shrooms. Most likely, this cave has been abandoned for a while, but because of the minecart, there has to be some sort of exit somewhere, or else they would have been able to build the thing. There's some water in the cave too, most likely clean enough to drink, but you can never be too sure. And unless you're willing to eat the magic mushrooms, there is no food. More of an escape room with the consequence of a slow, painful unaliving by starvation than a home. Igloo Peak. Igloos can be useful at times, but this igloo is impractical in every sense of the word. It's built right atop a cliff, not a good idea, with an ice cave directly underneath it, not a good idea, and worst of all, the outhouse, the only one in all of Animal Jam, mind you, is hanging just out of reach. So cruel. Honey Pot Hollow. This den essentially has the same problem as the Candy Cavern. All the honey in there will eventually rot, and if bees are attracted to the honey, then that's a whole other problem. Though, there are surprisingly still some positives. First off, there's water in the cavern. It probably won't be safe to drink after a bit because of honey contamination, but at least it's there. There also actually is an exit, so you don't have to break your way through the walls, but you'd still probably have to walk for a while before reaching society. Super Villain Submarine. <laughs> Time for me to carry out my devious, dastardly, super villain esque plans. I'll go underneath the cargo ship filled with the rubber duckies, pummel it with the submarine until the cargo plummets into the water, and all those beautiful golden bath toys will smother every beach across the Atlantic! <laughs> now, how do I even pilot this? unsafe and lonely. Seems like the submarine is in the middle of the ocean too, and unless you know how to pilot a submarine, you'll just have to hope the ocean currents bring you back to land. Spy Lair. Secret Agent Autumn, we need you. A fugitive is planning on dumping tons of rubber duckies into the Atlantic Ocean. You must stop them. I'm on it. Time to fight some crime. Wait... How do I leave? There is no exit to this underground lair. It's the candy cavern all over again. Though, I'm hoping it's more similar to the spooky cave, where there's probably an exit somewhere deeper within the cavern, but I'm not too confident that's the case. Cliffside Village Some say that the volcano seen in the background is actually the Volcano Isle Den, and yeah, it might be, but it doesn't matter anyways, as there is, like, one tree on this island to make a raft. Meso Falls. So, essentially, you live in a cave. I'm gonna assume we're not actually in the prehistoric times, but I'll also assume that there are prehistoric plants, which means prehistoric bacteria, which means prehistoric diseases. Everything is probably very humid, and the den itself definitely has no insulation. It would also be very difficult to traverse down that cliff. Arctic Burrow. 
It's literally just a hole in the ground with some suspicious liquid at the bottom. Now, credit where credit is due, there is a built-in fireplace, so at least it won't be completely freezing. Ridgeside Cavern. In Meso Falls, you essentially live in a cave. In this den, you literally live in a cave. There's no insulation, it's cold at night, and it's not safe from predators. The only positive is that you get to listen to the live water sounds as you drift off to sleep. If you even can get to sleep on straight up stone. Pegasus Palace. Just like the Sugar Palace, the ground can't even be seen from where the palace is. The palace itself looks nice and cozy, but not like that's gonna matter in the long run. Though, here's something interesting. Theoretically, it could be possible to get down using the clouds as they are palpable in the den and there seems to be a lot in the background, but the chances of accidentally missing a cloud or the clouds further down not being able to support your weight or there just not being any clouds further down at all make this a very dangerous method of escape. Floating Fortress the floating fortress, though impossible to safely get down from, could be possible to survive at for a bit. This is because the den supports what seems to be a mini ecosystem, with the pine trees and flowers and all. There's plenty of outside space for farming, so maybe it'd be possible to grow food by melting the snow? Tiger Temple Very humid, with tons of bugs and dangerous creatures everywhere. Like, at least we got water, but we're in the middle of the jungle, so our chances of finding society are really low. Snow Fortress I'm not entirely sure where this would be located because the background shows an infinite white wasteland, but I'll assume it's not somewhere like Antarctica. Anyways, very cold and I don't think the fortress has a roof. Water Park. What is up with Animal Jam and putting these giant elaborate structures in the middle of the ocean? Also, I think the den itself is like actually open. Not just, oh, you can't see the ceiling because then you wouldn't be able to see the inside. I believe my theory is correct because the den icon for the water park doesn't have a roof and you can jump from one floor to the other without smacking your head. Mangrove Manor. Mmm, I really don't like this den. The only positive is the nice, large layout, water, and probably some food. Other than that, the spikes poking out of the sand are a hazard and the bugs are probably twice the size of you. Gingerbread House. The chocolate hot tub would have the same problem as Honey Pot Hollow, but in this case, the coldness actually helps with this problem, acting essentially as a giant refrigerator. But because the chocolate is a hot tub, most likely that part and the surrounding gingerbread will end up going bad anyway. Pirate Cove. Rest in peace to all those who get seasick. You guys will just have to live in the single hut at the top of the cove. There are also some crates on the dock, which I'll assume have some supplies in it, and you're right next to the ocean, so if it comes to it, you can try fishing. Now, I would say at least you have the opportunity to sail the ship and find another place to live, but for one, that's if you even know how to, and two, that doesn't matter anyway because the exit to the cove is too small for the ship to fit through. Yeah, just a little bit of an oversight, don't you think? Popa Palace. So I assume that the Popa Palace will be built atop Mount Popa, and this is what Mount Popa looks like in real life. Yeah, you're gonna have a hard time trying to climb down that. Not to mention that the approximately two sauces long inside area doesn't even have walls. I even went as far as to check the weather forecast at Mount Popa, and yeah, you're gonna get rained on a lot. Ancient Tree. I mean, at least there's plenty of water, but maybe don't keep that inside the house. Everything inside would be dark and damp and all sorts of mosquitoes, spiders, and other creatures would love that. Hanging gardens. I'm pretty sure these used to be like whole societies. Don't get me wrong, they're very pretty, but I don't think anyone would be living at or near one of these anymore. The entire structure seems to be surrounded by giant waterfalls, so that would also make it increasingly difficult to leave. Though thankfully, it would be possible to survive because food could be grown in the gardens and waters everywhere. Python Palace. Very small, the basement is just a hole in the ground and you'd be sweaty all the time. Summer Splash Pad. So here's our selection. Tell me what you like. Mm-mm. Nope. No. Ugh. Definitely not. <gasps> Aw, yeah, sign me up! <laughs> no. But seriously, I mean, it's technically a public gathering spot, so it's like 
right in the middle of society, I could very easily just leave and chill somewhere else all day. The nights would be horrible, sure, but other than that, it really isn't that bad. Buy you bungalow. You'd have to walk through dirty water just to get to other parts of your home. Also, Marshland. Oh, oh, oh gosh! Not another place with water! Huh? Oh. Well, this is actually pretty nice. Just like the bungalow, bugs would be just a bit of a pain. But as long as you don't go out at night, you should be able to avoid the worst of it. Fairy Nook. I don't think the giant mushrooms are actually real because of that one unnaturally flat one. So at least the bugs won't slowly eat away at it but I'm not too sure about the brown shelf mushrooms. They look pretty realistic. Well, as realistic as Animal Jam can get. And they're bouncy, which I don't know, I guess fake mushrooms wouldn't be bouncy. Either way, this means that in a week or so, those mushrooms will be replaced by a zillion bugs. Summer Carnival Big Top. Pretty big, but not reliable in the storm. Sustenance is available, even though it's the most bottom of the barrel, barely counts as food, artery clogging, obesity causing trash there is, and the inside doesn't even look comfortable. Bounce house. One sharp rock, one gust of wind. That's all it takes to lose your house. Sand castle. At least the sand might harden into a somewhat sturdy material, but then again, all it would take is some water, a plastic shovel, and a little kid who doesn't know nor care what the word empathy means for your entire house to collapse. Spiral Bay. Hmm, a storm is forecasted for tonight. Eh, I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, maybe a beach, which is normally very windy, isn't the best location for a house made of cloth. Scottish Lock. Similar to the Spiral Bay, but without the possibility of a light breeze blowing away your entire house. Still the possibility of a large wave flooding everything, but the chances of that happening are a lot lower. Jungle Tree House. The tree house could be unsturdy, one really strong storm and your whole house is gone. It'd be difficult to traverse through the jungle because of the... the Oh no! Oh no! Rockstar Venue. <clears throat> I'm sure there's some sort of transportation from here to the mainland. It is a venue after all. But whatever transportation there is probably wouldn't arrive at the venue often. Mystical Fortress. Very beautiful architecture and plenty of space to live, though the lack of food could be a problem. Fantasy Castle. I mean, it may be hanging precariously off the edge of a giant cliff and is one earthquake away from plummeting to the fields below, but hey, it looks cool. Arabian Palace. Seems like we're in the middle of nowhere. Traversing the desert is not an option and it would constantly be very, very hot. At least the pool is there, but it would most likely be contaminated with sand in a few short minutes. Treetop Roost. Giant, uncomfortable nests. The inside part is fine, but traversing down would be very hard, and traversing back up even harder. Storms could also destroy all the nest parts, and really strong ones may even destroy the inside part. Cat Mansion. Essentially the jungle treehouse, but with more rooms, a fun slide, and the lurking anxiety of falling out of the infinitely tall trees. Like, seriously, at least the treetop roost has mountains visible in the background. You can't see anything from the mansion. It would be possible to get down this without serious injury by hugging the tree and sliding down, but that's not ideal, not to mention painful, and still very dangerous, and getting back up would be even more of a challenge. Science Lab. Weird square trees, but okay. Oh, but those tubes, those tubes would unalive you, like instantly. Go in and the suction will slam you against all the turns until you come out the other end looking like spaghetti sauce. Jamal Day Gift Palace. Assuming the walls are made of cardboard, like most present boxes are, the entire house should collapse in like uh, uh, a few minutes because of the melting snow. And if that doesn't destroy it, one rainfall will. Haunted Mansion. Ooh, I am the ghost of the previous owner of this house. You must leave immediately and never return. Or else I'll haunt you for the rest of eternity. 
Okay, look, I've gone through so much today. This is the best house I've been to so far. You can haunt me or whatever, but I'm staying. Oh, really? What could be worse than living in a house haunted by an evil ghost? Toxic waste facility, volcano, glacier, a dirty splash pad, the inside of a wet tree, a literal sandcastle. I could name a lot. Oh, that sounds terrible. I, I guess you can stay in that case. Yeah. The building is probably haunted, but at least it's a house. It needs some renovations to be fully livable, but after that, I could see it being a very nice home. Thailand Teak Retreat Big rain slash waves can easily flood the houses, and one misstep while traversing those pathways and you'll be soaked for the rest of the day. Outback Hideaway It's a nice house, but there's a risk of sandstorms, venomous desert creatures are a hazard, spiky plants and such. Well. At least we're safe from the bugs. Bunny Burrow. Now, if you tried hard enough, you could make this den livable, maybe even comfortable, but it'll take a lot of money and several trips to Ikea. The mailbox clues to me that this burrow isn't too far from society, so you can buy supplies easier and chill at other places while the burrow is being renovated. Haunted Drive-In. A drive-in would naturally be pretty close to society, and you get to watch free movies, so it's a win-win. Shepherd's Stronghold. There's a nice amount of inside and outside space, and the zip line, though unnecessary, and let's face it, pretty dangerous, does look pretty fun. There's even a moat to keep your enemies at. Not this time. Ugh. It's you, El Mosco. I didn't want it to come to this. Siberian Summer Palace. <clears throat> anyway, uh, I thought the Popa Palace had a small inside space, but this? If the Popa Palace was two sauces long, then this den is half a McDonald's salt packet. Movie Studio. <sighs> Darn eight? <sighs> Stupid alarm didn't work. <laughs> wow. Mm. How was that even funny? What's going on? Who's there? Stop! Stop laughing! Am I going insane? So, despite the existential crisis that constantly living on a movie set would inevitably cause you, this den's pretty solid. Nice amount of inside space and easy access to society. Pillow Fort. Though it might be everyone's childhood dream to live in a pillow fort, or was that just me? Anyway, it would be very unsafe to live in a giant pillow fort because there would be very little airflow causing a buildup of carbon dioxide. Maybe this could work if a ventilation system was implemented, but we still would have to worry about it raining and completely destroying the fort. Seaside Lighthouse. The only den that's on an island in the middle of nowhere that actually makes sense. I'm sure some sort of transportation off the island exists, but it might not be easily accessible, so you'll probably have to stay there a while. Treehouse. The dirt tunnels are really the only thing holding this back from being a great home. Though, renovations could fix this issue. There's a built-in treehouse on the surface and a nice, cozy, and most importantly, safe home underground. Definitely the most practical of the treehouse dens. Castle. Let me just... Can't be too sure around water, you know? Anyways, the dark stone walls make the place feel a little uninviting, but some wallpaper would fix this. I'd also assume this castle would be more out of the way from civilization. Aquarium Den. The entire den would smell like fish. Straight fish. And soon, it'll smell like dead fish if you don't feed and take care of them. But, one problem, there's no way to get in there. And no, this isn't a good thing because even if the fish are sealed in, the smell isn't. So what do you do? Nothing. If you try to break through the glass, you'll just end up flooding your whole house. Guess you'll just have to become nose blind to the smell. Pumpkin Pass. Ah, yes. I'm in my element when it comes to this den. The autumn vibes are immaculate. That being said, I definitely would not want to live here in real life. It just doesn't seem too comfortable. Also, I have an irrational fear of corn mazes. Pixel Place. 
honestly just a regular house, but if everything was Minecraftified. The sharp corners would be a nightmare to accidentally stub your toe against, but maybe you could sandpaper the corners to make them less dangerous. Shamrock Basin. This one is really small. Only the Siberian Summer Palace outperforms this one in terms of small indoor spaces. At least the yard pretty much makes up for this. Princess Castle! Welcome to the pretty pink Princess Castle! Here we have verdant Florida, luxurious rooms, and the ability to fall three stories down and break your ankles! And when it's time to hit the town, you can get to ride on your pretty pink sparkly horse drawn by Twilight Sparkle herself sequin and glitter covered princess carriage! Lucky Castle. The Princess Castle but Irish. Snow Light Manor. The house is precariously hanging off the edge of a cliff. It seems to be held up by rocks so it won't just fall off whenever, but really strong winds for an extended period of time would be horrible. Also, I hate the cold. Moonlight Manor. Same as the Snowlight Manor, but not cold. Dollhouse. It's essentially just a house inside of some sort of bigger house? I'm assuming the world outside is still the same size, but you'll probably have to navigate through the giant house first, and once you're ready to go home, you'll have to navigate through the giant house yet again. Cozy Library. Very close to society. Open floor plan, which I don't exactly like, but it's still a building with air conditioning and stuff, so it works. Wooly Salon. The inside layout is actually really nice compared to some of the other dens. The fountain may be a little much, but at least that means water is available. Botanical Garden. Kinda weird layout. I mean, cozy, but strange. There's a giant mud deposit right in front of your home, which is very ugly. At least all the pretty flora make up for it. Farmstead Province. It's a pretty normal looking farm, but there seems to be a constant storm over the horizon, so you have to be prepared for bad weather. Also, this farm's gotta be in Ohio because of this goofy ah uh, witch phantom riding a bicycle next to a tornado. Beach House. Now, because of my beach house bias, I'm just going to assume that the beach house is not somewhere far out in the middle of the ocean, but instead closer to the mainland where society would be. Though that still means that I need to use a boat whenever I want to leave the island. Harvest Farm. Fresh fruit growing right by your humble abode. Maybe not the most uh, comfortable to live at, but if you give it a chance, you could really make it your home. You eh, may want to skip this one though if you're not a fan of those. Uh, Critters. Friendship Cottage. Honestly, it's a nice little cottage. Probably not too far from others. Pretty comfortable. Really not much to say. Vintage Estate. Like, it's a mansion. Whoa, what more do I need to say? Well, actually quite a bit. I do not like how large the front lawn is. That extra space could be used to make the actual estate bigger, but no, they just had to build an unreasonably large front yard and a useless fountain. So yeah, that's why I have three points for personal opinion. Still a mansion though, so it's not that bad. Retriever's Rescue Center. Essentially just a house, but with a path that most likely leads to civilization, and a slide that leads directly into an in-ground pool. Much more fun than a mansion with an oversized garden and a fountain. Blooming Bistro. I mean, this is the only den so far that actually has a built-in kitchen, and it has a pretty okay layout and a really nice outside area, so yeah, I'd live in a restaurant. Small den. The Timeless. The Classic. It may be a small house, but unlike some of the dens on this list, you can really make it feel like a home. The reasonably sized front yard also has a fence gate that, in the game, leads directly to Township. Clover Cottage. Pretty small house with a giant outdoor space. It would take a bit to navigate through the dense forests and clovers, but I'm sure other people aren't that far. Spring Cottage. Essentially the Clover Cottage, but it got a glow up. Safari Manor. Seriously nice layout. Like, actually, I don't think Safari Manor gets enough credit for how nice the layout is. There's a built-in fireplace, in-ground pool, a pathway at the front that I assume leads to civilization. The Safari Manor's got it all. Well, besides the fact that I think we're in a savanna, so you may need to drive to society instead of walking. Spring Small Den. Simply the small den, but it gotta glow up too. Heart Chalet. The coldness would be annoying, but I mean, there's a built-in hot tub, and you know I love that stuff, so it makes it all worth it. Alpine Lodge. I'd rather stay here for like a week or two as a vacation, rather than it being my permanent residence. This is probably because I'm not used to living in wooded areas. Other than that, it's a very nice den with a cozy layout. It'd take a bit to get off the mountain I assume it's on, but after that, it wouldn't take long to find other people. Also, bugs. Mountain Hideaway. 
beautiful view, but I'd hate having to take that train just to get anywhere. Imagine you plan hanging out with your friends, but then, oh, sorry guys, I can't make it today because I missed the train that stops by my front yard every morning. Guess I'll just have to stay home because I physically can't get off this mountain without it. Grand Gallery. Essentially an apartment, but with an insane amount of outdoor space. Spooky Villa. Like a mansion, but with more dead plants, I guess. Painter's Loft. Definitely a smaller space compared to the Grand Gallery. The only reason the Painter's Loft beats this is in terms of normality. It's much more likely someone would live in a loft apartment than some rooftop art gallery. Jamai Wood Villa. This is the only other den besides the small den that has a gate that leads directly to township. Or, in our case, Hollywood. Or, <clears throat> excuse me, Jamalywood. <laughs> As you probably know already, I've always wanted an in-ground pool, though I don't really like the thought of living in Hollywood. Or <laughs> Jamal Bulldog Bungalow. This one is essentially just a house. A nice one at that too. Good amount of inside space, great outdoor space, and pathways that I would assume lead straight to civilization. Deducting a couple points for comfortability because of that horribly unsafe staircase that leads into the tower, though this could be fixed simply by blocking off the doors that lead to the stairs. <laughs> Himalayan Harbor. This is it, the most practical den Animal Jam has to offer based on the point systems I created. The Himalayan Harbor has a 9 for normality, as places like these aren't the most common kind of community, but they also aren't unheard of. Speaking of community, a 10 for accessibility. There are loads of houses around and in the background of the den, so other people can be reached super easily. The bridges over the canals also imply that using a boat isn't 100% necessary for travel. My personal opinion is 9 because this would essentially be my dream home if it weren't for how close the houses are to each other and the wa- The wa- No, 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 even the most practical den is it safe from them? No, I used it all? Ah! So, in conclusion, living at the base of an actively erupting volcano is more practical than living in a toxic waste facility. Always keep your bug spray on hand, and I'm moving to Venice. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you the Saturday after the next. Bye! Hey everyone, just want to know, what was your favorite skit in the video, and what did you like about it? I sank all of September into this, so I would genuinely love to know. Mine was the supervillain submarine. Leave a comment down below, and maybe even consider liking and subscribing. Thanks again for watching!